Welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. Now, who out there has been told by their wife or girlfriend that they're not allowed to buy a watch during this coronavirus epidemic? Raise your hand. Yeah, well, this guy too. Well, I've come up with a plan that just might work. It is a long shot, but I think it's worth a try. Odds are, since you've been spending day after day after day at home with your significant other, that she might be wearing the same clothes every day or wearing what she wore to bed every day or perhaps not doing makeup or fixing herself up or anything along those lines. And she shouldn't, she shouldn't. And why should she? There's no place to go. So here's what you do. You walk into the living room and you say, honey, is that what you're wearing today? And of course she will say something along the lines of like, yeah, you got a problem with it? And then you say, I found this great YouTube channel that shows makeup and hair tutorials. And I think you might really like it. Now we all know how that's gonna go down and ordinarily we would never say such things, but this is all part of the plan. She's going to get mad but you tell her the YouTube channel that you're suggesting is from a YouTuber named Dominique Saxa. Now, Dominique is the classiest woman I know. I mean, apart from my wife, apart from my wife, in case she watches this. Now, Dominique is the epitome of class. She's not like a 20 year old trying to show you how to do makeup or wearing booty shorts or something like that. This is a legitimately classy woman giving great tips. Oh, she's gonna get really, really mad and she's probably gonna yell at you. She's probably gonna chew you out. But hey, you're gonna get chewed out for a bunch of stuff. So you might as well use this to your advantage. So she'll be mad for a while. But then once she actually watches Dominique's channel, she's gonna see that it's gonna be very informative, uh, that Dominique is very classy. There's nothing trashy about her at all. And she's got some really, really good tips, okay? so. Your girlfriend or significant other will then theoretically be upset that she yelled at you because it seems like you genuinely wanted to find her something that was useful, even though you really didn't. And then she'll probably come out and say, oh honey, I watched the video. I'm so sorry for yelling at you. And then you're like, well, yes, I was so upset. I was just trying to help. So I, I, I was just so upset I ended up buying a watch. I'm sorry, I hope you're not mad at me. I, I was only trying to help you. Now this could go either way at this point, but I feel like she's gonna be a little bit more lenient on you and you can get that watch that you want. And now on to today's watch. I've got two watches to show to you today. They are both Parnas GMT automatics. So let's awkwardly bend over a table and take a look. All right, guys, let me know in the comments if that tip worked for you. I can't do it because my wife knows who Dominique Saxa is, so there's no way I can get away with that. I think I'm going to have to try something different. But on my wrist today is going to be a Speedmaster uh, homage that I made. I think I used uh, uh, parts from an Alpha Speedmaster. I did a uh, unbranded dial with it. Uh, I did this a couple years ago, so I couldn't tell you exactly... Uh, you know wh which parts to get but they were all off of uh, ebay so uh, if you just do a search for uh, uh st 1903 uh cases and dials uh, that's the movement that i have in here it's the same one that's going to be in the alpha paul newman uh, daytona homage uh, you should be able to cobble one of these together yourself and i do have it on an omega uh genuine omega speedmaster uh strap because I'm a jerk like that. And here is today's watch. This is going to be the Parnas uh, Batman GMT Automatic. You've got a 40 and a half millimeter case, a thickness of 15 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 and a half, 20 millimeter lug width, tapering down to 16 at the clasp, and back up to 21 with these pushers at the clasp. You've got a 120 click unidirectional bezel. Uh, usually GMT watches, and especially the uh, Rolex GMT, is going to be bi-directional. Uh, Parnas didn't, I guess, uh, spend the uh, time to uh, do that, although I figured that that would have been easier than doing a uh, unidirectional bezel. But anyway, uh, the bezel action is really solid, uh, kind of a little tinny 
uh, click there, but uh, there is zero backplay, zero, zero backplay. As you can see, everything lines up properly and it just, uh, it, it works really, really well. It also has a ceramic insert at this price. That is pretty, pretty good. If you are inclined to pick one of these up, I actually purchased mine pre-owned off uh, eBay, off a seller uh, from eBay. Uh, you can get them from the Parnas website. Uh, it was a little difficult doing a Google search to find the actual Parnas website. Um, so, uh, you know, I, eBay actually has sellers that are authorized, I believe, to sell uh, Parnas watches. So. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at, you know, under $80 uh, for this particular watch, which is quite a value. So the case is going to be an all 316L stainless steel, a mixture of brushed and polished, brushed on the top of the lugs and polished on the sides. The crown does uh, have a signature uh, on it, the Parnas P, which is a nice touch there. The crystal today is going to be sapphire. Uh, and again, at this particular price, sapphire crystal ceramic bezel, we are off to a good start. It also has a date magnifier, as you can see at the three o'clock position. The date magnifier, it's okay. It's, uh, it's not the greatest that I've seen, but it certainly gets the job done. I think they might could have done that a little bit better uh, than they did. Uh, it's it certainly lined up. I know some uh, issues uh, I've seen online that they, uh, some people had uh, complained that their Cyclops is not aligned properly, but this one is. It looks good. Not sure if it's two and a half times, but again, um, as I mentioned in previous videos, it really has to do with how far the dial sits back from the Cyclops. So I don't know, I might change that out with one for a higher magnification, but it looks good to me. All applied indices in the traditional uh, Rolex style. Uh, it has Mercedes style hands. And the hands on this are actually really, really well done. Um, they, they look uh, very high quality. Uh, really no issues. Uh, there's no rough edges or anything like that. Uh, they they look good and they uh, yeah they just uh, they they really pop. This is going to be a DG thirty eight oh four. It's sort of a uh, souped up version of the DG twenty eight thirteen, which you know I kind of have my own issues with. I've had and I've got two of these parnasses to show you today. Uh, the other one uh, I've had for several years now, and uh, it it actually has held up pretty pretty well. I think uh, no real issues, uh, just my traditional issues that I've mentioned with these uh, DG movements, uh, a little uh, jumpy with the seconds hand and setting stuff, but uh, works pretty pretty well. And the other one is. Uh, is actually one of my most accurate watches. These uh, DG2813 and 3804 movements are actually very, very accurate if you wear them on a daily basis. Screw down crown and also a screw down case back, which I will show you the case back in just a second, but uh, no water resistance really to speak of. I believe it's 50 meters. I could be wrong on that, but uh, the water resistance is so low, it's not even worth trying to take it uh, really anything but uh, washing your hands. Uh, the unscrewing of the crown, it does feel cheap. Um, nothing fancy there, but uh, it, it does uh, screw down a substantial distance. So you have a little uh, solace there that you can take in that. Now the winding of it, I'm going to put this next to the microphone real quick so you can kind of hear it. The winding is very grindy. Um, it doesn't feel uh, great. It actually feels pretty terrible. It feels like the watch does not want you to wind it, uh, which is not something that uh, is really something you want in a watch. But again, like I said, I haven't really had too many uh, problems with it. Now, pulling the crown out, I want you to watch the seconds hand uh, for me because when you, when you try to hack it, so look at the seconds hand and we'll see if it'll do it here. Okay, obviously. It does hack, it does hand wind. Okay, I literally did this like three times today and every single time that seconds hand jumped two seconds backwards uh, when I was trying to hack it. This time it's not, maybe it just had to get warmed up. But as you can see, this is a GMT movement. So you have a GMT hand, that blue hand with the arrowhead tip. And I'm gonna put this all the way over into uh, AM position so I can show you exactly, get all the way around here exactly how this GMT functions. 
Yep, I'm on a low budget. Can't afford theme music this week. All right, so we are in the AM position. You always want to adjust your watches, the date uh, in the AM position, or it will break. And I promise you these DG movements will snap that date, and you will never have a date for the rest of the time you uh, own the watch. But I usually put mine to about 9 AM, and then I'm going to put it back into the second position here. Okay, and so we're in the second position. So one way uh, changes the date, and the date change, I'm going to be honest with you, it doesn't really inspire confidence. You can see that it's it's pretty wobbly, and yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, hadn't had a problem, but it's just something that uh, seems like it could be an issue in the future. So rotating it clockwise, you're going to get the date change. If you rotate it counterclockwise, that's when that GMT hand starts moving. Yes, an independent moving GMT hand. So this is going to be a proper GMT watch, in my opinion. Now, I know there's uh, other other folks that say, oh, no, it's not because the hour hand doesn't jump around. Okay, yeah, yeah okay, I get it, I get it. But, uh, but you can set your GMT time to uh, wherever you'd like and then push it in. Screwing down the crown again, I like to go backwards a little bit to engage the threads. No problem, as you saw, that was pretty easy. So the bracelet is going to be uh, a Jubilee bracelet, and this Jubilee bracelet is actually really good. Um, it's not your Seiko Jubilee bracelet, for sure. It's, it's not that rattly. Um, it's uh, pretty flexible. It's very comfortable. This is going to be the new uh, style that they're putting out on these GMT watches because Rolex, for whatever reason, keeps doing Jubilees on their GMTs on the new ones they release. I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's what they're doing. So, you know, I can't really complain about it. But this bracelet, um, as you can see here, it is a uh, screw pins. So that's really uh, surprising considering the price of this watch. The case back is going to be your traditional uh, Rolex Submariner GMT style case back. Uh, so nothing to write home about there. It would be cool to have a you know a few Parnas logos and stuff on the back there. Uh, solid end links as well with this bracelet, which is a nice surprise. Now this does contain that crappy Parnas clasp that I complained about in some other videos with that lump that sticks out, and it, it's just not the most comfortable clasp in the world it does get the job done uh double pushing uh very secure i haven't had one open on me yet uh, but it also has this huge gap like when you're wearing it you see right there the gap between the bracelet and the clasp it's it just kind of you know flops around you know you could easily catch this on a lot of things uh so you might be scraping it across the uh, piece of cheesecake or whatever if you're reaching across the table and you're gonna have cheesecake all inside of there i'm not saying that that happened to me but i'm not saying that it didn't and then of course an engraved parnas uh logo in cursive uh brushing on the clasp as well so what do i like about this watch well and i'm gonna get eaten alive for this comment this is probably one of the best homages to the rolex gmt master 2 that i've come across and the batman specifically really is the most popular gmt that uh, rolex makes so this at a price of around 80 dollars you're getting a lot a lot of watch uh, you're getting hacking and hand winding movement independent movement on the gmt hand ceramic bezel sapphire insert decent magnification a really well done jubilee bracelet um, all of that stuff. So what do I not like about this watch? Well, I think the Parnas logo uh, just below the 12 o'clock indice is uh, pretty plain. I think they could have jazzed it up a little bit uh, or maybe made some sort of like logo or maybe just had the Parnas P there. I don't know, just your uh, you know typical, you know, it's just like Parnas. They just wanted to like have it on there. Now, I think you can get these uh, unbranded. But I'm really not a huge fan of unbranded dials, even though, yeah, that's obviously what I'm, what I'm wearing with my uh, Speedmaster homage. But traditionally, I do like as much writing on the dial as I can. Um, it just makes it look a little bit more interesting to me.
and there is a loom shot. As you can see, the loom uh, appears to be applied very inconsistently throughout the dial. So loom on this one, not really a strong suit and it does fade very fast. And of course, I don't like the clasp. Now, I want to say that I have seen Parnas, uh, that they've actually upgraded this clasp. I couldn't find it exactly uh, to show you guys, but I think they're doing that with some of these uh, newer models that they're putting out, So, which I think is a good choice. I don't think it's... I don't think the clasp is different. I think they've just removed this lump. Like they've redone the the insides of the clasp and, and I'm sure it probably makes the wearability much, much better. So this is the second um, Parnas GMT that I have. If you're not into the Batman, this one is the, uh, the black version with orange writing. And I like how they've color uh, matched the GMT printing uh, at the six o'clock position with the GMT hand. I think that looks really, really cool. Um, and like I said, I've had this particular one for uh, a couple of years now, and I have had zero issues. Um, yes, the seconds hand will jump, you know, so hacking, it, you can get it, but it's not going to be, you know, exactly, exactly where where you want it to be uh, some of the time. But that's really the only issue. And of course, the grindingness with the winding and the kind of sloppy way that the date changes, it doesn't really inspire confidence. But like I said, I've had this watch for two years. You know, I don't wear it that often, but I do manipulate it uh, quite often. And it's still ticking along pretty strong. I have this on a uh, Blue Shark NATO strap from BlueSharkStraps.com. Huge fan of Blue Shark NATO straps, as you guys know. I think this black and the blue plays off this uh, orange uh, quite well with this. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty happy with it. And there it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I'm not like a massive Jubilee bracelet fan, uh, but I think certainly it does look nice. And of course, there's that stupid lump that I've talked about several times. Don't know why they do that. But anyway, it's a good looking watch. Uh, you know, from far away, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference, you know, between I would say the, the actual Batman and this one. So if you're into that, and I know a lot of people are not, but uh, you know, I think it's fine if, if something's an homage. And of course, as you're noting, no anti-reflective coating at all there. But uh, but yeah, guys, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I know this is a popular watch, so I wanted to get it on the, the channel for you guys to check out. Um, certainly, it's a, a great, great value for money watch. One of the best value for money watches, apart from the water resistance. But don't jump in the pool with it, and I think you will be just fine. I will see you next time, guys.